The year is 1874. Picture this. A group of Mennonite families fresh off the boat arriving in the Canadian prairies. They are weary from their long journey, but their eyes are filled with hope and determination. They came from Russia, seeking religious freedom and fertile land. The journey had been arduous, but the promise of a new beginning kept their spirits high. The Canadian government had promised them both. Pamphlets and documents painted a picture of a land where they could practice their faith freely and cultivate the rich soil. What they found was a harsh landscape, unforgiving and vast. The prairies stretched endlessly, a sea of grass and sky. Still, they were determined. They had faced adversity before and were prepared to do so again. These were people of faith, used to hardship. Their faith was their anchor, and they believed that with hard work and God's grace, they could turn this land into their promised home. They built homes, tilled the land, and planted their hopes in the Manitoba soil. Each family worked tirelessly, from dawn till dusk, transforming the wild prairie into a patchwork of farms and homesteads. For a while, things went well. The land responded to their efforts, and the seeds they planted began to grow. Crops grew, families grew, and the promise of a new life bloomed alongside the sunflowers. The fields were a testament to their hard work and resilience. But then, the locusts came. It was a disaster of biblical proportions. Swarms so thick they blocked out the sun, descending upon the fields, devouring everything in sight. The sky turned dark with the sheer number of insects and the sound of their wings was deafening. What was once a symbol of hope, the golden wheat, was reduced to barren stalks. The crops they had nurtured with such care were gone in an instant. The Mennonites, who had staked their futures on this new land, were left facing starvation. Their dreams of prosperity were shattered and they were plunged into a struggle for survival. Their situation was desperate. The locusts had not only destroyed their crops, but also their hopes for the future. They poured everything they had into this new life. Their savings, their energy, their dreams, all were invested in the land that now lay barren. Now, with empty larders and winter looming, they were forced to make an impossible choice, abandon their dreams or appeal for help. The harsh winter threatened to compound their misery and they knew they couldn't survive without assistance. This wasn't just about survival, it was about pride, about their faith, about maintaining their self-sufficiency in a new land. They had come here to build a life of freedom and prosperity, and they were determined not to give up. It was about community. The Mennonites banded together, supporting each other through the crisis. They held meetings, prayed together, and shared what little they had. Their faith and unity were their greatest strengths. Eventually, aid came. The government and other communities responded to their pleas for help. With renewed hope, the Mennonites began to rebuild. They replanted their fields, repaired their homes, and continued to work towards their dream. Over time, the land began to flourish once more. The Mennonites' resilience and faith had seen them through the darkest times and their community emerged stronger than ever. The prairies, once a harsh and unforgiving landscape, had become their home. The story of the Mennonites in Manitoba is a testament to the power of faith, community and perseverance. Despite the trials they faced, they never lost sight of their dream and their legacy continues to inspire. Word of the Mennonites' plight reached Ontario. 
The news travelled through whispers and letters, carried by those who had seen the suffering firsthand. It was a call for help that could not be ignored. There, a community of Swiss Mennonites, themselves immigrants just a few generations removed from hardship, received the news with heavy hearts. They remembered their own stories of struggle, the tales of their ancestors who had fled persecution and sought refuge in a new land. They understood the struggles of starting anew, the precarity of life on the land, the backbreaking work of tilling soil, the uncertainty of harvests, and the constant battle against the elements were all too familiar to them. They knew they had to help. Leading the charge was Jacob Y. Shantz, a successful businessman and a pillar of the Ontario Mennonite community. Shantz was not just a leader in name, he was a man of action, deeply committed to the well-being of his people. Shantz, a man who embodied the values of hard work, faith and compassion, rallied his community. He spoke with conviction, urging his fellow Mennonites to open their hearts and their wallets. His words resonated deeply, stirring a collective sense of duty and empathy. Shantz's leadership was instrumental. He organised meetings, coordinated efforts, and ensured that every contribution, no matter how small, was valued. His dedication was unwavering, and his passion was infectious. They organised fundraisers, went door to door, and dug deep into their own pockets. The community came together in a remarkable display of solidarity. They held bake sales, auctions, and community dinners, each event bringing them closer to their goal. These weren't wealthy people, but they understood the meaning of community. They knew that their strength lay in their unity, in their willingness to support one another in times of need. Every donation, every act of kindness, was a testament to their shared values. They understood the desperation in the pleas for help from the prairies. The letters they received painted a grim picture of the hardships faced by their distant brothers and sisters. It was a stark reminder of the fragility of life and the importance of compassion. Their efforts paid off. The community's relentless determination and hard work began to bear fruit. Within weeks, they had raised $50,000, a staggering sum for the time. It was a monumental achievement, a reflection of their collective spirit and generosity. The funds were a lifeline, a beacon of hope for those struggling to survive. It was a testament to their generosity, a beacon of hope for the struggling Manitoba settlers. But it wasn't enough. The need was too great. The scope of the devastation too vast. The challenges faced by the settlers were immense, and the initial aid, though significant, was just the beginning. The need was too great. The scope of the devastation too vast. The settlers in Manitoba were facing not just financial hardship, but also the emotional and physical toll of their struggles. They needed more than charity. They needed a lifeline. They needed more than charity. They needed a lifeline. The community in Ontario knew that their efforts, though valiant, were not enough to address the full extent of the crisis. They needed a more sustainable solution one that could provide long-term support and stability. Shantz knew where to turn the Canadian government. He understood that to truly make a difference, they needed the support and resources of the government. Shantz began to advocate tirelessly, meeting with officials, presenting the case for aid, and pushing for policies that would provide lasting relief for the settlers. The halls of Canadian Parliament were abuzz with debate. The air was thick with tension and anticipation, as politicians from all corners of the country gathered to discuss a matter of great importance. 